Right, so, welcome to the 2021 Fire Alarm Collection update. Um, this is basically where I will, once a year, uh, update you on the progress of my Fire Alarm Collection, how much it's expanded throughout the year. Um, and I'll do this by just going over every device and demonstrating it for you, and showing um, sort of where it's from and how long I've had it and stuff like that. So you can see I have quite got a bit, I have got quite a bit now. So um, it'll be interesting to show you some of the more recent acquisitions. Of course, this does not include the things that are currently installed on my system, um, but I will cover those later on. Um, so yeah, we'll start with the top shelf, and the top sh uh, I've got it organised how I have my drawers organised, because it has recently moved to this shelf, just yesterday. Um, it used to be in a set of drawers under there, but obviously now that we've tidied the shed, we've used that for proper storage and stuff. And my collection has moved to the corner where there was loads of wood, so it's nicer. It's a much nicer environment in here now. Um, and its primary use is now for alarms, which is great. Um, but yeah, I'll start by going over the uh, sort of notification devices at the top. Um, so this is just sounders, bells and sounder strobes. Uh, the majority of them are obviously just uh, conventional devices because I only went addressable this year, but I'll get more onto that later. Um, so I'll start with possibly the oldest sound. Well, it's definitely the oldest sounder. Well, the longest sounder that I've had which is the classic Roshni. Now you'll see it's not on its original base. I do have the deep base for it, but this is actually on a base for my, uh, for a different device, which is on the system, which I'll show you later. But the Roshni sounder head here, it's my first sounder I ever got. Now, slightly more recently, I got this white or gray one, however you want to look at it. Now this one's much older in terms of actual age. It's um, one of the ones that uh, Adam from AS Systems had. Uh, he uh, gave it to me when I, when he sold me the VIG, which is very epic. Um, so I think it's it's probably a f just a bit uh, older than this one. The dip switches are, are different in the back. You can't see them. I can't even bother taking the base off to show you. I would show you, but it's efforts. Um, so yeah, they both basically have the same tones. Um, uh, I'll put them back. I want to keep it nice and tidy in here. And then I have a newer Roshni. This is one of the low profile, so they're quite uh, thin. And they look a bit different. It was a bit dusty. Yeah, they do look a bit thinner. Just nicer design. The only issue with these is they were made a bit cheaper by just putting a plastic cover on there. They're much less fireproof now. These old Roshnis could withstand... There's, there's a video from Blue Cylinder where they withstood... A direct blow torch for multiple minutes without failure. Um, so the old ones are impressive, but these new ones, I don't think they could do the same. I don't think they've been tested yet, though. Someone needs to do that. <laughs> um, moving on, uh, I've had this one for quite a while. This is the Klaxon Sonos. Uh, this is a another conventional sounder. It's a bit destroyed. I've had it for a really long time. Um, this is a conventional sound made by Klaxon, which is a Texacom company, which is a Halma company, so it's it's made by the same company that owns Apollo and all that, basically. Um, it works. They're not great. Um, I like it. People like them because they have like the Apollo tone and stuff like that. Um, they are good sounders, but they aren't great. That's just the O-ring for it, for waterproofing. Um... Then we have this, this is a really good sounder, this is the KAC SAULPR4. This is actually um, one of the sounders that brings me memories back uh, the most, because they had one in my primary school actually. And they're very loud, very very loud indeed actually. And um, you can see they're an odd shape in comparison to the majority of sounders, but they do look really nice. So you could picture it on a wall there, they do look nice. Uh, again, conventional, um, 24 volt, all that, four tone sounder. Um, yeah, they're really nice. Uh, Vimpex Banshee XL. These are also really good sounders. I would prefer these over the newer Roshnis if I was given the choice between the two. Yes, it might be thicker, but it's 
A louder and B uh, the tone selection on it I just prefer. It has like the Banshee sweep, which is just a much nicer sounding, much richer sounding sweep than the other, well, than the Roshni's. Um, I'm yet to get an old Banshee. I need an old Banshee. I'll find one. Or even a Bedlam. I, I like one of them as well, but those are basically just sirens. You can't even call them sounders. Um, C-Tech Active Sounder. Uh, this is with the non-voice, non-VAD, the most bass model sounder they make. But it's it's one of my favourites, this one. It, it's really chunky and really... Well, some people would say it's ugly, but I like it. Um, but it, it's, it's got really good um, tone equivalents. So it's like it's got the Apollo comparable. It's got the Hojiki comparable. Um, they're really good um, for that. So basically, if you, if you were putting one of these sounders as a sort of backup sounder onto an addressable system but you wanted it to sound like one of the addressable sounders, or, or at least sound similar. Um, you could do that if it was an Apollo or a Hochiki, and it, it does have a similar sounding one to it, like Old Gent as well, but it's not it's not great. The Apollo and Hochiki ones are, are much better. It also obviously has the C-Tech alternating and stuff, so, like, for the cast protocols and stuff. So, yeah, it's really nice. Uh, underneath that, I have another really good sounder. Again, a conventional sounder. It's the Viper. The screws just come out of it. That was epic. I'll find it later. Yeah, this is a um, this is another sounder that they had in my primary school. They had kind of had both of them together. Um, these were in the actual building, and these were in the porter cabin. Um, but yeah, this one is. Uh, these are really, really loud. They are incredibly loud. Um, like absolutely terrifyingly loud for for their little size. And you might notice that they're very similar to the Cranford sounders. I'll get onto that later. But uh, yeah, they have similar tones. Uh, although this one's only four tone, I believe. Whereas that one's obviously 32. I'll move on to that one next, actually. The the Cranford sounder. The Cranford... It's not combi, is it? What do they call them? Vantage, that's the one. Um, basically, it's sort of the newer version of the Vipers. It has the same tone as the Vipers. Um which is the default sweep tone, but it's similar, it's not exactly the same. Um, but it also has like more modern tones and, and a lot more tones. This one's a bit bashed up, I did get it used from a fellow enthusiast, but um, yeah, it's great, good sound. I haven't really used it much yet, I haven't had it for very long. I only I went the dressable quite recently, so I haven't had as much of a need for my conventional devices recently. Another thing which I bought from the same person, which isn't this Banshee, which I'll just gently move out of the way, is a slightly rarer device. This is uh, a Series 65 bass sounder. Now, this is one of the higher-pitched, newer models. Um, this is... it's got the sort of Apollo ancillary tone, and um, they... Uh, they kind of start making these, and they've fell into obscurity as a result. Um, I'm quite lucky to have one. Um, uh, they're, they're not really rare, but they're not common. That's the thing with them. Same with uh, something that you'll have noticed looks very similar, which is very similar, which is a uh, Klaxon Sonos uh, bass sounder, which is the sort of bass sounder version of this. Um, same tones, but this one is the... Uh, not the same tones as this one, but, like, they also made ones of these with the same tones as these. Basically, you'll notice the PCBs are absolutely identical in them. Um, just slightly different sounding. Uh, but, yeah. And you'll notice, obviously, it doesn't have the integrated bass. This one only fits Series 65 and Series 60 detectors and things like that. Uh, and alarm sense, theoretically. Uh, but this one, you have to put the bass on for whatever detector. So it can fit any conventional detector which you please. Um, so that's cool. Put these back. You know, I've just got some random glands here and the locking mechanism from the C-Tech uh, sounder just to keep them safe. Um, I'll put the C-Tech sounder back as well. Bear with. Okay, what's next? Ah, yeah. I'll go with the gent bell. It's obviously the biggest thing that's here, you probably noticed it. I'm not even going to bother picking it up because it's just, you can see it clearly. Um, now this is a gent, 
I said it was 4199, but again, I don't know if that's true. It's just what it says on the inside. It doesn't say that that's the model. Um, uh, I'm not too, I can't remember what the actual model was, but yeah, um, I had to repaint this because it was like missing a large majority of the colouring of the text. So I repainted the text with some enamel paint and it's looking uh, fresh, if I do say so myself. I'm still not uh, arsed with these white bits though. Uh, it's not perfect, but it, again, it, I, I don't think I paid much for it. I don't remember how much it was. It was like a few months ago now, but um, very, very loud bell. Uh, one of the loudest that you can actually get for a 24 volt conventional system, actually. Um, it's the only bell that I have as well. I, those of you who have been on my channel for a really long time will know that I did have a fully on centrifugal bell. I had to get rid of that because it was dead on arrival. It was really weird. So I bought it from this, I think it was like SD Fire Alarms. Is that what they're called? This big company that does fire alarms. And uh, they sold me it without the bolts in there. And basically, I got the bolt for it. They sent it to us after. And then when I got the bolt for it, the bell just, uh, it d didn't really work. It was like, the um, the striker would only start sometimes. You'd have to give it a nudge with your fingers. It was really, really weird. But it, obviously the motor was just wrong in there. There was just something wrong with it. Um, so yeah, I do not like fully on bells. I much prefer these gent ones. Uh, I think that's everything apart from the gent stuff now, which will actually, no, to be honest, I did forget. This little Byron bell, it's not a fire alarm bell, it's a doorbell, but it's there because I have nowhere else for it to go. It's um, 12 volts AC. But um, yeah, so these two sounders are conventional as well. These are Gen C3s. Again, another thing that has fallen into obscurity since their manufacture ended. Um, so Gen stopped making these because they are spengs. Uh, but they're really good sounders. These ones are both Mark II. So they have these slightly more obscure tones, as well as a green PCB. Um, and this really annoying back piece that constantly falls off. Um, but yeah, they, they're they weird, but they're really good. Like, really, really loud as well. Again, it's another terrifyingly loud sounder. And it's fallen over. Um, obviously, this one is the strobe version, so it's practically identical on the back. Other than the fact that it has a LED strobe on the front. So that's awesome. Not very bright though, I don't think. Uh, very similar sounder, but this is obviously addressable. This is a Gen S3 with a white body, otherwise known as a yellow body, considering it is rather yellowed from the sun. Uh, this one is a Mark I uh, S3, so it's quite an old one. Um, and it's obviously for the Gen Vigilon systems. Very nice. Underneath it is another S3, but this is the high-powered VAD model. This is Mark III one, and it has a voice as well. Um, so yeah, and obviously the VAD is much brighter than these regular LED strobes. Um, so yeah, that is it for sounders that are on the shelf. I will show you the sounders that are on the system now. So we have the Gent uh, 32000 repeat sounder. This is... Basically a 34770 with the detector taken out, or a 32775, depending on how you look at it. Most people don't know what 32775s are, though. Um, but yeah, so that is the first uh, sounder-only thing that is not on the shelf. The second being another 32000 device, and a very rare one. I've had this for a really long time now. Um, this is the Gen 32202, two-way sounder. Um, and it's obviously currently on the system. Uh, again, terrifyingly loud, um, uh, really creepy sounding, nice sounders, uh, much better than the S3, he's not gonna lie. And then I'll show you some of the conventional stuff. I've got a conventional demo system here, as you'll see, not switched on right now, but um, yeah. So we have two Protec sounders. This is a Protec sound of VAD. So uh, the head is obviously different as well. They're not the same, they can't be interchanged. Um, and obviously the one here is wall, uh, is just sounder only. So and you'll notice they've both got some sound dampening in them so that you, uh, so they're not deafening. Because obviously this is head height with me right now. I'm holding my phone right above my head. 
well not above it, like right at it, like in front of my eyes, so um, it's best to have these slightly muted. These can be really loud, but I haven't tried them on full volume yet. I'll have to do it one at some point, but um, they say they can be like 100 decibels or something, so I'm assuming that they can probably be just as loud as that. <laughs> that would be terrifying. Um, but yeah, and then the last notification device that's actually on a system is the fully on uh, strobe Solex thingy. Now this is on the base for my Roshni. I did mention briefly earlier that the my first ever sounder was on the wrong base. This is the base for my first ever sounder. But because this is in conduit, it's just better to have the deep base, otherwise I'd have a wire going behind it. Or I would have to do a rear entry job, which is effort. So yeah, we'll go back to the shelves now. And we're going to start with, uh, well, we're going to move on to the call points. Now, I have way too many call points to know what to do with. Um, I need to sell some, but will I? Probably not. <laughs> I have said it many times that I will, but I still can't be bothered. Um, but I'll start with the gent ones. So we have a gent addressable 34800 there. I have two of those. One of them is here. On the system. And then, ow, I've just stubbed my toe. And then we have a Gent uh, 1195. This is one of the much newer ones with white glass and a square faceplate. Also has a 470 ohm uh, resistor in there. Although I think it's missing a screw. Weird. That'll be in the box probably. Uh, I have another uh, 1195 here. I won't get it out because it's kind of part of the display. This one has, this one's really old, this is sort of an early 90s one. Um, it has the rare glass and obviously a round faceplate to match. Uh, moving on, we have a, um, what's it called? I can't remember what these are called, it was like FP, or something like that, I don't know. Um, CQR uh, call point, it's recessible even though it looks like glass. Oh. There we go, he has to press them really hard, they're really hard to press. Um, yeah. Interesting call point, but it doesn't really work properly with most panels. It's really weird. I think I've got it wrong. I think I need to cut a link, but I don't want to. <laughs> um, next to it, really good call point. Let me just move this sign out of the way. There. Uh, this is an Alto, otherwise known as a Menvia point but you can see it has the alto glass it, the box is here um it's uh not a very common call point not gonna lie especially not in the uh, conventional one um it has this really weird glass um but other than that it's just a standard uh alto or menvia call point i have another one which is uh which was menvia branded which is this one uh but it's currently got fire safe glass because the glass that it came with was just regular clear glass with no logos and that broke so I have some fire safe glass the fire safe glass came with one of these core points um because these were all prestige branded but it obviously had a takeover by fire safe at some point so yeah ran a bit of fire safe glass um I'm, I'll obviously move on to these uh the elephants in the room which is these many old style KCs. so this one is uh, a static systems one. This is a, a closed contacts one, I think, actually. So it's just a switch. Um, then this Protec one here, this is a Protec one. You can't tell externally because it doesn't have any logos, but I know that I, know that I put the Protec one here. Um, that is like a different resistor rating because Protec panels worked weirdly back then. Um, but yeah, it's still conventional. Uh, and then the rest of them are all Citadel branded, but they're all obviously manufactured by KAC. Um, so they all look identical apart from the glass. But all the ones with prestige glass, or that one and that one, are uh, Citadel brand and that one. Uh, but yeah, just put it down there for now, don't need it. I'll move on to some of the more modern call points. This piece of crap over here is an ESP call point. They're not really that good quality. Uh, yeah, they're really easy to press, but they're really hard to test and reset. Just very weird call points. Uh, same with the 
for your universe. That's just the not a used thing for this cool point, by the way. Um, but this is a Foyon Universal call point, which has been activated already, so I can't press it for you. Uh, again, this resetable element's been like really dirty for a really long time, and I can't bother cleaning it, but you know, I'm amazing, so it gets left. Um, this is a, what do you call it, cycle manual call point. This is one of my favourite conventional call points. You can see it's got like 3D... 3D uh, things on it, and it lights up in the middle, it's really cool. Made in Italy, yeah. SeaTech actually used these on their uh, systems, on their cast addressable system. So it shows that a reputable UK company likes these cool points, so obviously so do I. Um, then we have a, a new style KAC. Um, it's... Uh, very boring, <laughs> so I won't go too much into detail about that, but yeah, it was the uh, one of the earlier call points I ever got. Nice call point, though. Um, is that it? No, that's not it. This weird thing, this is just here because I found it, and it's great. This brings back memories. <laughs> Basically a weird homemade call point thing. Um, and then this, we have this like fake American call station. Um, no idea why. I've never used it since, like, my old demo board tests. Um, but I'm not going to bin it, because why would I? It works, it's there. It adds to the shelf, makes it look a bit more interesting, so why not keep it? Did I miss anything? Nope, that's everything on the shelf. So I'll move on to call points on the systems. So here we have a 34800. I did mention it briefly before. Um, it's mounted on this piece of wood to protect the wall a bit. Um... It goes all the way down to the floor. Um, yeah, really nice call point. Obviously, I did show you the other one of these that I have on this shelf just before, over there. And another gent call point that I have is the Gen S4. Um, now, the system isn't turned on, so I will press it for you. Gen S4, resettable call point. Um, so, yeah, that's obviously a newer gent call point. And... Sadly, it can't be reset by pushing the uh, thing up, although that would be quite funny. Um, and then we have one call point on the demonstration system, which is obviously, it's, it's another new style KAC. Uh, these have glass in them. And it's, um, again, nice call point. This one's better though, because it has the LED and it has some ADT branding, so it's, it's uh, mixed up a bit. It's nice. Um, but yeah, now we'll want to move on to the detectors. Now, I recently, like this is the part of my collection that's expanded the most, in my opinion. Um, because with the change to addressable, I've had to buy a lot of detectors because I didn't have any. So to be able to keep the test interesting, I've bought uh, quite a few and been given one, uh, which was the S-Quad, which uh, Adam gave me when I bought his Gen Vigilon. Um, which is a very epic. Uh, but yeah, so I'll start off with the conventional ones. So I have two Series 65s, pretty basic, you know what those are. Two Series 60s, uh, but those are Emergy Light branded. Uh, an Apollo Alarm Sense, uh, again, quite boring. Uh, Apollo Orbis Multi Sensor, but I don't even know if that works anymore, I'm pretty sure it broke. Um, that's all the Apollo boring this out of the way. Then it gets interesting when we get into the Zyton stuff. I have two Zyton detectors. I'll show you the other one in a minute. Uh, this is a Zyton heat detector. Um, and people make fun of Zyton a lot, but these are actually really good heat detectors. They work really well, and they are seemingly pretty waterproof because they were glued and they had O-rings and stuff. I reckon that we could give this the toilet flush test and it would probably work, but I'm not going to do it because it's epic and I don't want to break it. Moving on, we have this, which is a four-wire detector. These aren't very common in the UK. These are only really used on intruder systems. Uh, it's manufactured by A to Z. Don't think you can see. Oh, yeah, you can. A to Z. And it has a little test button there. So it, it is for, domest for domestic use for on an intruder system. Um, and it fake poles, which is really cool. Uh, but, yeah. 
don't really use that much, but if I make an intruder demonstration system, I definitely will be using that, and that's partly why I bought it. This, another epic SeaTac device, is a SeaTac Active Smoke Detector. This is just optical, uh, with the really weird branding that I still haven't taken off yet. You'll notice they do look really nice, these detectors. Quite aerodynamic looking. Um, and you can see it is obviously made to match these sounders. Um, they actually make sounders with the same shell as these for Apollo addressable systems. They even make voice sounders with the same shell as these for some reason. Not too sure why, but yeah, they work. These are nice detectors though. Hopefully I'll be able to use it at some point, because it doesn't work with my conventional panel, but I have got another panel on the way, more about that later. Um, is that it for conventional? Well, I will show you the conventional detectors that I've got on the board, actually. So, we have a Nitan EVC-P, conventional. Um, you've seen this loads of times if you've seen my system test back in the day, back in the conventional days. Um, yeah, another really nice looking detector. And this is another Zyton, this is a Zyton uh, ionisation smoke detector, again, conventional. Uh, not much to say about it, apart from it's pretty epic, I'm not going to lie. And then we have the uh, Ho Chi I think it was like something EN or something like that, I don't know. Oh, SLRE, that's the one. It's the version of the conventional Ho Chi Chi detectors where the LEDs are at the side rather than on their um, really, really nice looking detector. I need more of these, I will probably buy some more at some point. Um, but yeah, that is it for detectors in terms of conventional. Addressable detectors are the things that I've bought way too many of recently. And I do not plan to stop anytime soon. Uh, so, I'll start with Gent. Well, I'm not going to just start with Gent. It is all Gent. I'm a complete spank. This is a, a Gent um, 34770, I think this one is. Yeah, it is. Because uh, it's the slightly worn down one. Uh, this is my only 34770. I do have more similar detectors, which I'll go on to later, but... Um, yeah, 34770, you know what this is. It's optical heat, so it's a multi-sensor with a sounder built in. Uh, very loud, and you can't adjust the volume on them, which is epic. <laughs> not that loud, they're not horrible. Um, a similar thing, of which I have many... Um, this is a 32775, so this is just the, a 34770, but with... Uh, but it was designed for a different panel. Um, but they all work on Vigilon panels because Vigilon is newer. Um, uh, yeah, does the same job. The only difference in terms of uh, what it looks like is that the, you see the ring is a, a different place to the 34770. Um, I have three of those uh, 34... Uh, sorry, no. Uh, 32775s. Um... And then for detector only, non-sounder. Actually, no. First, I'll, I'll use this one. Uh, this is an S-Quad. But it's heat and sounder, voice and strobe. So it's basically the full whack just without the smoke part. Or the carbon monoxide, but who even cares about that? Um, so yeah, it's just heat detector and it flashes and makes noise. Unsurprisingly bulky things them. Don't really like them as much as I do the uh, 34770s and stuff like that. I think they're much better then. Even though they don't have voice and strobe and things, but you know, Gent should have just used the similar design when they uh, made the S-Quads. They should have just used these shells and put a strobe on them in my opinion. But yeah, sounder uh, detector only uh, Gent addressable detectors. I have three of these Gent th uh, 3471 detectors. Um, these are really cool, but they're getting a bit rare now. I bought uh, three of them off uh, somebody in the community called Printer Sofa. Go subscribe to his channel. He has some epic music videos on there. <laughs> um, yeah, these are again multi-sensors, optical heat, uh, pretty basic, but again, a bit rare. And they're, um, they're quite brittle as well. I cleaned these out because they were covered in paint and stuff, and I restored them. Um, and they crack easily. I did crack them, uh, well, a couple of them a bit 
Uh, you can't really see them when they're together, but like I saw it at the time it happened. I, I, I'm lucky though, I haven't taken any chunks out of the plastic yet. Um, <laughs> I don't plan on doing that anytime soon. Um, but yeah, uh, those are cool. I have three. One of them doesn't work. I think it might be the one that I picked up that doesn't work, actually. Yeah, it is. Um, and then all I have left after that in terms of fire devices is two three four seven tens now these are three four seven seventies without the uh, sounder so it's just optical heat uh, actually that's not a good example this one looks nicer in here so yeah you can see there's no holes for a sounder on there or anything like that just a detector multi-sensor again optical heat you see my wiring in there the little tiny base for it that it goes over once again, one of the best looking detectors that any company's ever made. Uh, they're really good, yeah. Now, the only other fire things that I have are the panels. So I'll show you, I have a Gent Vigilon Compact, you've probably seen this before. It's a one loop panel, uh, one loop card. There's the software information about it. I didn't spell panel wrong before you have a go at me, and it hasn't got the thing on the lock, just in case it locks itself, because I don't have a key for it. Um, so the door kind of just sits closed, and it's an older one, it's from about 2004, it says on the inside, I think. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice panel, one of the best things I've ever purchased in my entire life. Um, it's not on at the minute though, as you can see, because I can't be bothered having it on. And then I have my homemade panel, now this is conventional, obviously, to work with my conventional stuff. I do have a real conventional panel on the way. It's uh, a JSB Firedex 2202, but it's a bit dodgy. It's the one that Naka Fire and Security had. If you know, if you know him, then you will have definitely seen that panel before. It is a bit of a meme, not gonna lie. Um, but I'll probably put it on another piece of wood and have two conventional systems. I might even try and network them. I'm not too sure how I could do that because um, it's easy to. Yeah, actually, it's probably possible, probably possible, I'll try. Um, but yeah, I made this panel. This is what I like to call the box of relays. In fact, I will turn it on for you and give you a quick demonstration, because the video is nearly over anyway. Uh, where's the plug? Hmm. Oh, it's been shoved over here somewhere. Bear with. Okay, we have our main supply. Um, so yeah, so it has, it's very basic. You just turn the key switch and then you can carry out these three functions. So you can set the alarms off. Silence it and then reset. Um, obviously the devices do work. This is that KAC that I mentioned earlier. And it does latch. So it does the basic functions of a real panel, uh, uh, albeit very simplified. And obviously if the key isn't in there, you can't do anything. Um, so yeah, last but not least, I have some intruder stuff. It hasn't changed since my last video, so I won't bore you too much with it. I have my Scantronic 9300 panel. Uh, it doesn't work. It's uh, not got a power supply or anything. It's a bit boring. Got my PIRs, that's a god or something, something, I don't know. And that's a Risco something. I'm not really knowledgeable about this. And then I have a little bell box here, dummy box, with an old decrepit sticker on it. And then these are just some wires. One of them is actually for the Vigilon. That one's for the Vigilon. That one's just for the batteries on the Scantronic. And a random siren, because why not? <laughs> but yeah, that's it for this uh, video that's dragged on for far too long now. Um, about my fire alarm collection. Hope you enjoyed the uh, video. It was <laughs> God, my hands are hurting from filming for so long. I'm exhausted now. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, and I hope this gave you a, a, an idea of how much my system system collection has expanded recently. Because uh, it is a loss. Um, so yeah, so I'll 